Mitch Marsh, 22 years old, he's got a few ups and downs, but he's had a big uh, few months. He's got uh, high hopes for the future. He has been very good. Uh, he was very good for Australia, A, eh? And uh, we chose him to go to uh, Zimbabwe. Played a couple of terrific innings there. Bowled nicely. And, I mean, that's... He's a package. He's, uh, he's an all-round package. And it's, it's really pleasing to see that we've got a few of them around at the moment. Uh, it's really nice to see. I think every team needs an all-rounder and we've got two or three now that are looking pretty good. Well, Shane Watson yeah, is a seasoned campaigner. He's got a pretty good first class record when you have a look at it. He's got nearly 9,000 runs, over 200 wickets. Um, he's got four test hundreds. Uh, apart from that, he can be as destructive as any batsman in the world. And I think he's in a pretty good space at the moment. Um, He's itching to play cricket, uh, and you know it's funny how little things set you back. But in in some ways, that setback might be a hell of a blessing for uh, for Shane. Not having had to go to uh, Zimbabwe, he might be better off for that. So can you fit him and Mitch in the same test team? So, say again. Can you fit him and Mitch Marsh in the same test team? Oh, you you can fit more than one all rounder in a test team, yes. Uh, but whether it'll happen, um, it remains to be seen. We'll have to wait on conditions and and form, uh, and we'll see what happens. What are you expecting from the wickets to play the spin? Well, I mean, there's a possibility that uh, the three grounds that we play on will all be very different. Um, I've seen, I mean, I've lived over there for a while. Sharjah, to me, always seems pretty flat. It doesn't bounce much, and uh, I think it's a pretty good batting pitch. I don't think it'll help the fast bowlers too much, although it may reverse swing, uh, if we want to talk about that. I am not particularly want to talk about that today, but there you go. Um, Dubai can be quite uh, quick and bouncy. Uh, the Australian curator there, Tony Hemming, um, he likes to see the ball fly, but whether or not uh, he has to hand that pitch over to the Pakistani curator... Uh, in the past he's handed it over two weeks before whether or not he has to do that this time I'm not sure um, but if Tony had his way and provided he's still there I'm assuming he's still there um, it would be a very fast bouncy pitch it's got that capabilities and and the one at Abu Dhabi um, well I think that might turn a little bit somehow I've just got the feeling but Nothing, nothing drastic, I wouldn't think. I think the seamers will still uh, will still play a role in the UAE. It's going to be very hot and humid, by the way, while we're there. The uh, test squad with uh, Glenn Maxwell and Steve Smith also out of the bowl spin. What's your the four guys came in the bowl spin? What was the chance of Steve O'Keefe getting in the game? Well, I don't know what chances uh, he's got at the moment. Uh, once again, we've got to wait and see till we get over. If it's a raging turner somewhere, uh, then he's got every chance of getting a game, I'd suggest. Uh, but at this point in time, um, you know, we'll wait and see. Uh, well, I think what we've done uh, is to try and pick uh, a test squad, certainly, uh, for every condition. Um, you might think we might be one pace bowler a bit light on. Uh, we have two all-rounders in that situation that can come in and bowl. I don't think we would probably ever go in with four pacemen uh, into that into a test match there with four out and out pacemen uh, but you know we'll wait and see it's once again well yeah I mean we haven't picked him uh, because we don't think he's capable of playing you know we want him uh, if the conditions are there, uh, if Nathan Lyon were to get injured, and you know we can only go with one spinner, well, he's a man. He, he's he's got a good record in uh, Sheffield Shield cricket, and I mean he can bowl. Iraq had a lot of success against Pakistan. Do you think Pakistan are susceptible to left arm spin? Pakistan uh, haven't had a great record against left arm orthodox spinners. Uh, Harath's about the same size. 
as uh, Stephen O'Keefe. Um, and, I mean, Harath is not a big turner of the ball. Stephen O'Keefe's not a big turner of the ball. They both rely on accuracy uh, rather than huge amounts of turn. And, you know, that's another reason he was chosen. Um, yeah. yeah, George, uh, I think well, whatever George says would be 100% completely honest. And I um, mean, he said that he wants to not necessarily have another go at Test cricket, although deep down I'm sure that's what, you know, that's one of the underlying reasons. But he just wants to be the best cricketer he can, he said. And he wants to play four day cricket, he wants to play long cricket rather than uh, too much short cricket. He wants to get back and play for Tassie. I think he really enjoys playing Sheffield short cricket and uh, you know he wants to get red ball runs again. Uh, and I, look George, terrific bloke, terrific captain uh, and he'll be missed. His presence around uh, everyone will be missed. He's a, he's a great mentor as well, George. So, uh, but the time's come and uh, uh, he was the one that suggested it. We didn't, we didn't push him. Um, Michael Clark, are you confident that he'll be right for the first test? No, not <coughs> confident. Uh, you can't be confident about Michael, but I tell you what, he's only missed one in what is it, however many he's played, over 100. Uh, he has played over 100, and yeah, of course he has. Uh, so, you know, he's, <laughs> he's got a great track record of getting up for tests. Um, I think Finchy might have said that he wants him as a standby player for the T20s and wants to run him from long on to long on mm. and bowl him and bat him down. Mm. So we'll wait and see about that. But uh, no, he'll be, he'll be, I'm sure he'll be right because he's he, there's no more dedicated bloke in, uh, in getting his rehab in than Michael and he will not want to miss any test matches even if that means he has to miss some one days, and I'm not suggesting that, but I mean, being named in the one day is not only named, but he's captain, and he'll uh, try desperately to be ready for them. Whether or not he will be, I don't know. I really don't. Glenn Maxwell's um, spot in the test squad, is he going primarily as a, um, a, back, a batting backup or a backup rather than as a, as a spit bowling option? Yeah, look. He, he's, uh, he's a bloke with immense ability, as we all know. Um, he hasn't done enough, uh, probably to warrant selection in the test side, but he's the X factor, and he's got a very good record against Ajmal, both in the UAE and in England. Uh, but, boy, you know, you'd love him to realise his uh, potential and play consistently well. Whether or not we're ever going to get that from Glenn, who knows? But he's, I mean, technically he's a, I think he's a very fine batsman. Technically, I don't think he's a fine bowler, but he should be able to do that. He's got that much ability. And we just want to see him improve. We really do. Uh, we think the world of him as a talent, uh, but you know, sooner or later he's got to produce consistently to be a regular member of any Australian side. He, he, he could play, uh, remembering that we've already got one off spinner. Um, we're probably not going to go in with two off spinners, yet they're totally different spinners as well, you can say that. Um, if the occasion arises, he could play both test matches. If the occasion doesn't arise, uh, he could play no test matches. So, I mean, we, we've tried to cover all elements. If someone gets injured, if a batsman gets injured, if a batsman goes down, uh, then we've got a couple of options there as well. Have you got you in your first side? In our first side? We'll wait. Wait and see. Wait and see. Uh, Rogers is in the side. Um, and, you know, all being equal, Rogers will probably start. Probably. Rod, Maxwell, he's such a good player of spin. Yeah, look, there are all of those possibities, Malcolm. There, there really are. 
and that's that's the way we've sat down and picked the side. We're trying to because we're not entirely sure of what we'll get because things change very quickly over there, as you know. We're not entirely sure what we'll get, so what we've tried to do is cover all bases. And, um, you know, that's been fortunate for a couple of players. And also, we were very lucky to be able to have uh, been given the green light to pick a squad that big, I reckon. He's always an unlucky player. Who's an unlucky player this time? Whew, I don't know. I reckon we've got most of them, haven't we? There's not too many that you could say. Is there a fourth class bowl who was um, <laughs> one of about four blokes, I reckon. <laughs> we, well, we didn't have to. We didn't have to decide on that, so we didn't. We decided to go the other way. But uh, there'll be some experienced fast bowlers on standby. Well, um, I think it was, I think it was you pretty blunt about how Peter was going um, over in, when the series was ending in Cape Town, Peter Siddle. Has he shown enough to get Aussie play back in? Uh, yeah, look, I, I wasn't over there. Um, but um, I think after a long season, um, Peter's pace was down, according to uh, Enver and, and, and Buff. Uh, it was just down a little bit, and they were looking for someone uh, in that last test match a bit quicker, and hence Pato played. Uh, I saw I was up in Townsville when Peter came up there with Craig McDermott. Uh, him and Ben Hilfenhaus are up there. They both bowl well up there. They both bowl quick. Um, Siddle is back to uh, running in hard. And uh, I think he's been doing quite a lot of strength work. And he's fit and raring to go. So he's got that few case back. Uh, well, without you know, putting a speed gun on him. Uh, but it looks to me like he's bowling as he was. Yeah, I, he's, he's a good... Hardens performed, Peter. Another all rounder in the one day piece we started with Sean Tabbert. Went to the national selection uh, squad up in top end. Yeah, look, Sean had a terrific year last year uh, in Sheffield Shield cricket um, and in the, uh, what's the Ryobi Cup then. Uh, I think he took the most wickets in the Ryobi Cup. He uh, I think he was New South Wales uh, Player of the Year last year as well. Um, the two blokes that you know really I thought showed massive improvement in shield cricket, and I saw a hell of a lot of shield cricket last summer, was uh, Sean and Sam Rainbird from uh, Tasmania. Both those blokes came on a treat. Sean was obviously uh, head of uh, Sam before the last season started. He played a bit more cricket. And he came on really well. Uh, Rainbird um, also did well in that, although he's got a bit of a niggle um, in those uh, games up in the uh, Northern Territory. Um, and that, they're two young blokes that we want to keep our eye on, and they, they're very good, done well. Um, that's the captain's job. Captain decides the batting order. Uh, we just give him a team, and he sorts out where they bat. Uh, but I'm I'm sure that uh, the captain has got him batting at number six at the moment.